Hello, and welcome to the November edition of the Private Finance ESG 5 in 5 podcast, the podcast in which we spend five minutes exploring the five key ESG trends set to shape the market this month. I'm Rahal Haq, Vice President, Climate and ESG Capital Markets, and I'll be taking you through this month's key trends. So firstly, uh, we wanted to touch upon the growth of ESG in private capital, uh, private capital markets. Now, a recent report by PwC estimated this growth to be between, or the market will grow to, n- between 0.8 trillion euros to 1.2 trillion euros by 2025. And this is from a baseline of 250 billion euros in 2020. So quite a considerable growth over the next five years. Now, the primary driver of this growth is driven by infrastructure investments, which is to be expected based on the decarbonisation ambitions and objectives of various corporate governments um, and firms alike. However, another interesting trend related to this growth is is the growth of the estimated growth of, of private debt um, within the private capital um, assets under management. And part of the reason for this is is the growth of ESG-linked investments or ESG-linked uh, lending, where KPIs are typically associated or linked to these debt facilities and, and, and very much helps to facilitate much of the transitionary activity that firms and uh, corporates um, would, would, would benefit from, from that transition. Now, on the second key takeaway for us, um, is in relation to a, an innovative or interesting transaction that we've seen in the market is EDF who signed their first corporate green repo agreement, um, which effectively, um, you know, uh, aligned the use of proceeds, um, to EDF's green bond framework. Um, in addition, the, the repo was collateralized by government bonds, but, but is also Just another example of innovation within the the financial services space, whereby financing are reorienting themselves to to help facilitate green and and social and sustainable activities more broadly. So given the backdrop of COP26, the UN Climate Change Conference held in Glasgow in the past couple of weeks, the next couple of points will talk to science aligned targets, which are basically Targets that are effectively intended to bring greenhouse gas reductions aligned to a 1.5 degrees transition pathway. Now, so the third point that we have is that financing institutions have been one of the earliest adopters of science-based targets. And when I say adopting, we mean um, committing, having the intention to to, to establish and set science-based targets. However, to date, only 3% of financing institutions have converted this commitment into a target. And this is primarily due to the complexity of their scope three emissions and and the emissions that are effectively associated with both their lending books and their investment portfolios as well, which creates complexity and as a result makes it a challenge to establish sufficient uh, targets in the first place. Now, one such firm, that has managed to do that and has been a stand-up former with respect to, to leading the pack on this front is EQT. And this brings us to our fourth point, uh, which over the past month, EQT became the first private finance firm to have approved science-based targets approved and put in place, um, whereby they would achieve operationally net zero emissions by 2050 with an interim target to achieve 50% greenhouse gas reductions by 2030 on top of which they also committed to establishing or rather having set science-based targets for all of their portfolio companies by 2030. A target date that is 10 years ahead of the the guidance from the science-based target initiative. And finally, standardization. So the IFRS Foundation officially set up the International Sustainability Standards Board, or ISSB, over this past past month. And the intention here is that this new body will sit alongside the International Accounting Standards Board to develop harmonized global ESG disclosure standards that will helpfully bring 
greater standardization with respect to climate related disclosures and other general sustainability related disclosures. Um, and the first set of standards are expected to be formally adopted in 2022. Thank you for listening to this month's Private Finance ESG 5 and 5. I hope you found it useful. As always, please be sure to check out our monthly newsletter linked in the description for more on the key ESG trends shaping the market this month. Thanks again and see you next time.